Hello viewers It's been a while since I've done a video Three weeks in fact As I was reminded by one of my colleagues Jamie Rayner So Jamie Here's your video My ride out after three weeks And it's going to be on the NT1100 We've got the Android Auto working Now Android Auto is trying to go take me down a back route because the M25 is pretty busy at the moment which it normally is during the day and that's why I always use the motorbike if I'm going anywhere during the day so we're going to go uh, my own little route which I normally go and the sat nav will probably start directing us in that direction we always try to keep the speed limits if I can to some degree Now for some reason it's trying to take me down that road there and I don't want to go down there So it might be that the sat nav is telling me to avoid something It's normally right is all I can say But the sat nav Yeah the thing's bleeping in me ear so the sat nav always tells you uh, the way to go, thinking that you're in a car. Now motorbikes can normally get through anything. Apart from a roadblock. I did a video a while ago when I was travelling to work. And as I was going to work I said motorbikes are fantastic. You can't stop a motorbike. Unless you have a roadblock. And that very same day, what happened? They shut the Darford Crossing Bridge on my way home and I was there for about three hours So that wasn't much fun I'm going to um, turn the sound off on the uh, sat nav and on the Android Auto there's a little uh, button there you can actually mute it so I've muted that so I don't hear anything because I know where I'm going Yesterday there was a I had a live stream and if you haven't checked out the live stream check it out It's the one where I was explaining about the um, ODB scanners which you can plug into your motorbike to clear faults Now I did have a problem with my, my CB125 about a week ago and what happened was it came up with an engine light for no apparent reason I was just riding along like I'm doing now an engine light came on and what I did I ordered a scanner and I basically ordered a it was a car scanner and uh, an adapter lead so I could plug it into the Euro 5 plug on the Honda bike but I didn't quite know that uh, it still wouldn't work when I plugged it in the car it worked perfectly as you would expect said it was an automobile ODB scanner and the adapter cable I checked all the, the connections for continuity and for pin for pin to make sure it was correct and it was and um, so I eventually gave up with it and bought another scanner now the first scanner I bought was only 12 quid, 12.99 which was reasonably cheap and it does work on my car so I'm not fully disappointed with that let's see if we can get down here One of the beauties of a motorbike, eh? Getting to the front of the queue. So yeah, um, where was I? ODP scanners, yeah. So the one I bought off the car obviously had a problem. Still works my car, so that's in the boot of the car now. That'll be handy when I need it. And when the new one arrived, it was a little bit too late. 
because the alarm or the engine fault light had gone out on its own but luckily enough the scanner that I bought the second one you can actually check the history of errors that was on there and looking at the problem it said it was an O2 sensor I can't remember the actual number of the error but if you watch the live stream that we did yesterday you will probably see the error. I might do a little video on uh, the error and uh, the scanner at a later date so keep an eye out for that um, but eventually it gives you all the data, it gives you your throttle position O2 sensor readings, temperatures and all that sort of thing so it's there if I need it in the future so I'm out today basically because uh, I need to do a bit of shopping and I don't go anywhere in my car normally during the day around this area it's normally busy it can just all of a sudden change from clear to lots of traffic the motorway jams up this road gets completely stacked because it's the alternative road to the M25 but luckily enough it's not too bad at the moment but we'll see how we get on so I, if I'm going to go shopping I'm going to a, a big shopping centre, it's called Blue Water and they've got all sorts of shops there and um, what you don't want to be doing is walking around with all your biking gear on like I've got me textile jacket my textile trousers my gloves my crasher scarf let's get out of his way quick and what I normally do, or what I do do, I've got panniers on the bike. Oh, I've got to put my boots away as well, I've got to get rid of my boots. So I've got panniers on the bike and a top box. The top box can fit two crash hats in if I need to, but I don't use two crash hats. So what I will do, I want to get to my destination. Like now, I'm in motorbike mode. Got all the gear on, safe. But when I stop, what I shall do is take all this gear off, put it in my panniers in my top box, and then I'll be ready to do a bit of shopping. And nobody will ever know I'm on a motorbike. I do love motorbikes for a form of transport. It's a fantastic way to travel. You do have to be careful of some idiots on the road this junction here you can go straight on or you can go down this little slip road and nine times out of ten if you come down this slip road it's quicker than going to the roundabout and turning left not that you'll ever come down this road any time at all but it's good to know now we've just come through a place called um, South Darrenth we're now heading towards Dartford and if you look up there that's the A2 that joins on to the M25 and if you see the traffic up there there's queues there and them queues are what's waiting to go on to the M25 and we'll see that in a minute when we cross over or oh, no we won't because we're not going that way You would have seen it if I was going up there to the left, but I'm not. Now the NT1100 has bags of power when you need it. You don't need it on these roads, but uh, if you get on a motorway or some nice twisty roads, it's really good. Now I posted a couple of items on my printables channel 
or Pinchable's uh, website if you want to call it that and if anybody wants to print one of these which is a cover for the MT-1100 uh, bottom dashboard just so you can't see all the bits uh, the display there while well, I don't really want to see it especially at night time because you can see the, the glare of that and I just don't like it so I've made this little 3D printed cover you can see all the warnings no problem it doesn't uh, stop you seeing the warnings it just gets rid of the display in the middle and I also put a um, a 3D model for a number plate cover if you have a motorbike and you're doing YouTube videos and while you're doing the videos you don't want anybody to see the rear number plate well all you have to do is take this uh, cover and place it over your number plate and hey presto nobody can see it while you're taking your video the only thing is you have to remember to take it to wherever you're going before you take the video like I'm going to take some videos when I get off this bike showing you how I change into all my uh, normal gear but uh, I didn't bring it today so I'll have to improvise with that one there's a building load of new houses there in Dartford it's called King's Reach if you've got plenty of money they start off at about £500,000 each and that's probably only for a two bedroom small one a bit out of my price range I think we're just passing the um, the Dartford Hospital it's just there on the right it's a big place that very very busy now Blue Water Shopping Centre which is off to now is in a it's just there to the left and it's in a natural um, well I don't know if it's natural but it's in like a, a sunken hole if you know what I mean there's uh, like cliffs all the way around it and it's right in the bottom of them all and you'll see that when we, when we get a bit closer now there's something else I put on the uh, printables website to download for the NT I don't know what it was now it was the power socket adapter plate now on this bike I've got here under the seats I've got two 12 volt sockets which come in very handy if I'm going uh, riding anywhere I can stick my phones under there or my chargers and bits and pieces can come from it and to fit them there I made a 3D printed bulkhead and if you have an NT1100 and you want to put uh, power sockets under your seat get down to uh, printables.com the links in my home page for the YouTube it's on the top and see what's there if you print that get a couple of eight millimeter studs about six nuts and bolts a couple of washers and you'll obviously need the two 12 volt sockets one of which on mine is a, a USB it's got twin USB on one of them and it's got a normal 12 volt socket on the other so yeah check them out if you're interested if you've got a 3d printer around then have a go at printing them printing them 3d printing is one of my hobbies comes in very very handy on a motorbike just printing spare parts and doing your odd, uh, little modifications here and there now they have one of the longest zip wires in the UK here and the zip wire you could probably see over there there's a tower on the top of there and that zip line goes all the way down there right the way down there I haven't been on it yet but uh, something to add to my bucket list there's also a skydiving uh, thing you can do skydive what it basically is it's a massive fan they start the fan up you jump inside and it blows you up and it, it gives you the impression that you're doing some skydiving we're soon going to be stopping here and I'll give you a little bit of a video showing you 
how I get prepared. It takes to five minutes, and I'll look uh, as if I haven't got a bike. But you do need the two panniers for sure, and you do need a top box to do it. Let's see how busy it is today. Part next to all the Teslas, all the cars being charged with the batteries. So we're going to pull in here and then we'll push the bike in. Uh, wobble it backwards on me two feet. There we go. So I'll just get the bike on the stand. Right, join me in a couple of minutes and uh, I'll show you how we change over to shopping mode. So here we are, we're stopped. And there's the NT1100. Beautiful bike, all nice and clean. And uh, as you can see, we've got the panniers and top box on there all we have to do now is get chains in the back here always bring a pair of shoes so first of all my jacket comes off all my gear out of my pockets and I'm going to take my uh, boot off I'm not sure if this is going to come out in the video but uh, you never know boot off And trousers off. As you can see, I've got a hole in my sock, but never mind. And then what I do, get my shoes on. Now, can I remember how to tie my laces? Let's hope so. Now, I'm not getting much shopping today, just a little bit. I don't find it any sort of inconvenience doing this. For me personally, I'd rather have this uh, short time putting everything away than spending all that time in traffic. So, well, first of all, we put our boots in here. One goes that way, one goes that way. Boots. And I can actually do this on the CB125F as well. Should put them in there as well, actually. Should go in. Normally does. Well. So that's that sorted. I'm going to do the same with this. Another bike coming in here. BMW GS 1200, I think. They go in there. Those in your pocket. GSR 1200. I just put my hat in there and we're ready to go. So there you have it.
Here we are, we've got our trash set on. Shopping's in the bag, in the top box. Shoes are in the right hand pannier. And uh, make sure my headset's turned on, which it is. Brake on. While the uh, Android Auto sorts itself out. So the beep off me come uh, headset. And Android Auto should start up in a second. Check I haven't left anything. Let's go. So we've done our shopping on the NT. And now we're on our way home. It would take us about 15 minutes, I would think. I hope you can see Android Auto there. The images are really, really clear. We're going to go back the motorway, I think, uh, this time. So there you have it, Blue Water Shopping Centre.
this road here goes right away around the whole shopping centre now has various exits on it depends on which way you want to go not your usual ride in the countryside but it just gives you an idea of how you can travel on a motorbike and go dress for the occasion, any occasion just stick your gear in the top box and panniers and away you go and you'll get there on time for sure now this road here, that barrier in the middle it used to be one road and all the cars on the right hand side used to always try and get into this lane so what they've done, they've separated so you can't do that anymore probably not get through them so I don't think I'm gonna speed up I was gonna but uh, I knew I'd never make it just gonna put that into sport one Now as you can see there on the sat nav, the, um, that's the A2 that is, that we're going to go on first. And when we get on the A2 we'll be pulling off very quickly onto the M25. To the right over there is the Dartford Crossing and to the left is Kent and that's where we're going out into the countryside quicker on the way back because the motorway is always quicker now unless you're in that traffic over there now the reason I went to Blue Water the back way was because if I didn't I'd have to filter all through that traffic and it goes back right to Junction 3 which is probably about another four miles up uh, ahead glad I have a motorbike the amount of time it must save in your life if you add it all up they're gonna take probably an hour just to get two miles three miles now here's another speed camera on the left there 
They have to be very careful, they're all around. Look at that traffic! Murder! If you're on a bike to get through that to the Darford Cross, it'll take about 15 minutes. On a car, an hour. At least. And the bad thing is about it, when you get through all that traffic, you got to pay £2.50 to get through a tunnel. So, yeah. If you live in the UK, get a motorbike. Best way to travel. Right, we're going to turn off here. We'll be back on the uh, small A roads. Let's see what's going on on the good old Google Maps. Get home and have a nice cup of coffee. Android Auto is pretty good at telling you where the traffic jams are and things and there's just a little bit of red there telling you there's a queue here. I know it's only a couple of cars but it does give you a bit of warning. And there's the police waiting for somebody or having a vest I guess. just laid this road. It was full of gravel a couple of weeks ago. It's horrible. It gets in your motorbike and everywhere and all the little nooks and crannies. Settled down now though, thank goodness.
here we are, we're back at Brands Hatch. Nice round trip. Done the shopping. Come back. So I'm going to leave it there. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.